Okay, I'm outside the house. We have uh, two dogs in this uh, in this session. We have Bruiser and Art. Art is in the house behind a barricade in the basement. And this video, I'm gonna go over how you can teach your dog to be calm before you release them using operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is basically waiting for the dog to do something. So if a dog comes up and jumps up on me, I would freeze and become boring. And when the dog jumps down and sits, I would pet it. So when it jumped up on me, I became boring. It was my wife saying, I don't like that. When it did something I want, it sat. I reached down to pet to say, I do like that. Now, these dogs in particular are very, have a lot of energy. And so we spend a lot of time off camera doing some impulse control exercise. So make sure you practice the leave it exercise and the focus exercise. And if you forget those, message me, I have videos and links I can send you. So basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go inside, I'm gonna approach, I'm gonna explain more out here because it's probably gonna be pretty loud. He's gonna be barking like crazy. So you're not gonna be able to see him, but he's gonna be behind a gate. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wait until he settles down. When he settles down, I'm gonna start reaching for the handle to let him out. But as soon as I start reaching, he's gonna recognize he's gonna freak out. And I'm gonna stop and we're gonna wait. This might not be the most exciting footage. It's gonna take a couple minutes, but you're gonna see me start and stop several times. And if I do this right, now, ideally we would wanna exercise the dog first. These dogs need more exercise like we talked about off camera. But if you exercise the dog, if you have a dog really high energy like this, exercise him first, give him 10 minutes to recover, then practice this. It will take a lot of the piss and vinegar out and it'll speed up the process. All right, let's go inside and meet Art and see how we can do this. All right, if you can come over and grab that bad boy. Thank you. Okay. Well, a little aperture change as we come in here. All right, so we're coming over here, let's make the show. So that, that has to follow this part. All right, it may be right about there. So if you can get this angle, if you can. Yep. So you see he's settled down somewhat. He started scratching, so I stopped. There's a kind of a sliver on the other side. So now if he's all excited and I let him out, that's the energy he's gonna carry. He's gonna spaz out. And we want to understand that that energy is not wanted. We're not gonna yell at him, we're not gonna correct him or punish him. We're just gonna reward the energy we do have, which is, which is calmer energy. So I'm waiting for him to calm down. We have the barking. So yeah, you see, he got started getting a little excited there, so I just wait. And I'm positioning myself so I'm sideways to him, not facing him. So what I'm basically, what I'm essentially, essentially what I'm trying to do is break the activity down into small steps. The first step is I walk here. I don't start the process. I don't start the process of letting out until he's calm. And you hear a little frustration in his voice that I'll point when he does it. So really, that was kind of a good example. So it's not, the, it's not the full throated bark, it's a like that. Got excited.
patience is a virtue. Oh, Lord. So he wasn't as calm as I normally would like him to be, but I don't want this to be a 25 minute video. And you see the dogs are kind of roughhousing a little bit. They practice, most of their exercise is done through roughhousing. So I don't think these dogs have a lot of practice calming themselves down. So you need to look for opportunities and ways where you help the dog practice. This is a wonderful opportunity to do that because you're going to come and do that a couple times a day. If they get too excited, walk away. Now we have, uh, and have a little bit more distance away for the dog to sell them and come back and repeat it. Now, since there are two dogs, it's gonna be faster for the guardian if she separates them and practices one dog at a time and maybe switch it off each every other time. The other nice thing to do this is occasionally put a dog down there, take the other dog outside to do a potty break, uh, maybe leave the other dog outside, come in there and practice with this dog without the other dog. You wanna keep on practicing with them independently till they both know that the only way I'm getting released from there is being calm. And once you go to the door and you have five times in a row, you go to the door and the dog just sits there or just doesn't have to sit, but just can't be barking and circling and going crazy. So once you have five times in a row, that dog, you go, you go over here and the dog just is like, and then you open and let them out. Then you want to put them, uh, try them uh, both together when both of them can do it five times in a row. So in this way, the dogs have basically learned how to do the skill separately. Now we're going to the culmination, which is teaching them how to do it together. All right. Uh, yep. Well, this is a uh, bruiser, Come here, buddy. and this is art. And these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have the dogs that get very excited to learn them to develop a little bit of self-control in them. So they can learn a little self-control when you let them out of the play area.